things of that nature, 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 things of that nature. All right. Well, welcome into the pod of that nature post spring first practice reaction show thing that we're going to be doing here. I'm John Neighbors, joined by Curtis Wilkerson, Andrew Ellis of Natty State Sports. And fellas, we had spring ball actually happening in front of our faces this morning, bright and early at 830 ish in whatever that practice facility is called that Arkansas practices in. And it was good to be able to see the guys out there and the coaches yelling and screaming and getting fired up. I, I was I was pumped up and excited about it. Dude, they gave us the entire practice. No, literally. You know, yeah. like that that was awesome. I mean, in the fall we get, you know, three or four periods and you might get to film a couple of them, but we got to sit there and watch the entire thing. And uh they did more the first day than I than I thought they would. Yeah. Um, I guess that's what happens when you get to see a whole practice, right? But dude, a lot of uh, a lot of seven on seven, a lot of team stuff, and they were in, you know, they were in shorts or whatever. But I, uh, I feel like I learned a lot today. So I definitely learned a lot. I mean, you know, it's one day of practice. You know, we're we're, we're, we're overreacting a little bit, but that's what we're supposed to do. But uh, yeah, I, th- I thought they like hit the ground running, and I, you know, nowadays in college football, we think of it as like practice day one. It's like all instructional or whatever. These dudes have been meeting for a while. They've got the yeah. offense implemented and everything like. I thought, uh, you know, we'll get into, a, you know, the details of what we saw a little bit, but I thought it was cool to see, like, Taylor Green have seemingly complete control of the offense, so that was kind of interesting to see. But, yeah, good to be out on the gridiron, hear the pad popping a little bit, hear the whistles blowing, hear the curse words from various coaches. It's, yeah, uh, man. I it's love a fun, that. It's a fun time out there, man. I was I was excited to be out there, and, yeah, we were out there for what seemed like two hours. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was fun. I, I, heard, I heard curse words from multiple coaches, but I don't know that I heard one from Bobby P., I don't think He's I did. Little, it. He was kind of mellow, little, man. Little tame. Yeah. Look, he looked comfortable <laughs> makes me in his own has, skin. Uh, has Bobby Bobby P been neutered? They, uh, <laughs> they, they neutered him. Man, I mean, he, he seemed like he was he was chilling the first day. Yeah, he's yeah, settling yeah. in. He, he's, yeah, he's he's getting his bearings. He you knew know. all eyes were going to be on him though. Oh you know? well, I mean, he probably heard <laughs> us, but for like two weeks, John's been on the show. Like, we I want to hear him. I want to see him dog cussing folks. I want to see him getting in their ears. Uh, <laughs> he yeah, he it. was he was chilling today. But yeah. hey, maybe I mean, with the way the offense was playing today. Didn't have too much to complain about. Uh, I'd be relaxed too. They didn't yeah. face too much resistance from that Arkansas defense, but uh, <laughs> no. man, it was fun. It really was. No, it was, and like just again, you know, people we have fun with it, but it is spring practice, so just like know that, and yeah, it's. But we have fun like being able to talk about it because, let's be honest, like the number one thing here, and you can call it an overreaction, but this is actually something I don't think is an overreaction. No, Arkansas has their QB one, yeah, and it is Taylor Green. And now, it, now, if the rest of the quarterbacks want to stay, you know, I know that that window is going to open up for the portal, whatever. But right now, I think you have your QB one and guys trying to battle it out for QB two, <clears throat> and that's it. Taylor Green's the guy, and I don't even think it's close. I don't even think they tried to hide it. I mean, you know, no, I, I was kind of wondering. Yeah. I mean, you know, who knows what the rep situation is going to be like? And hey, we might go out there tomorrow, and maybe that's the day where Jacoby Criswell runs with the ones every day. Who knows? I know they do stuff like that every now and then, but. Yeah, I did not see anybody other than him step in with that first team, whether it was seven on seven, whether it was team period, whether it was fastball, fastball or just yeah. drills. Like, he was the first guy up every time, which I thought was interesting. And, uh, you know, it, it, it probably makes a little bit of sense the more I think about it because Jacoby Criswell is obviously the oldest guy in the room, been, in cam- been on campus for a couple years now. But, like we talked about recently, it's like this is a brand new offense. There's no, you know, there's no – pecking order there so yeah. it just kind of starts with whatever they want and bobby bobby has this guy that he brought in and so i think uh it gives you a little bit of an indication at least who they think is going to win the job and well i don't think they'll come right out and just be like hey he's number one but i mean we didn't see anybody even think about lining up with that first team nope. offense no man and and you're right about the offense being you know completely different in the pecking order like the only thing a guy like criswell or or singleton has you know that that maybe green doesn't is the rapport that's already built with some of the guys the receivers so it was really nice to see, you know, Taylor Green out there making connections with Luke Has and Andrew Armstrong on the slant, which he might do 80 times this season. Uh, but he just looked very – it was just different, him lining up versus everybody else in terms of just the command and the feel that was out there. It just seemed very evident right away. Uh, you mentioned it before we went live here, Andrew. Like, he he was just so decisive in everything he did. There was no second guessing. It was take the snap, make your read, get the ball out. 
And yeah. uh, he just seemed very composed and in control. And uh, for the first day, looked pretty good. Yeah. yeah, and like let's just be clear here. It's not like we're saying, hey, we're blown away with what we saw from right. Taylor Green. Now, not he a had perfect some nice, player. Yeah. He had some nice throws. And like, you know, <clears> I thought all, all the quarterbacks had some moments here today. It's not like we're coming away from the practice. He was so good at practice. That's why we're saying this. I'm just going from, just a, like you said, a team operation standpoint. And yeah. I didn't think there was any debate about it. It didn't no. even look like there was any question of like hey, who's going to go line up there. It was like it was him every single time. And honestly, Jacoby Cruzwell was not lining up with the second team every nope. time. I no. think we talk about that. But uh, KJ Jackson, the freshman, he's who is a big boy, was a good ball, dude. Yes, right before does. we walked good. in, I said, you know what I remembered about KJ Jackson? He's left-handed. I was like, who's this humongous guy wearing one five throwing lefty? It's KJ Jackson, but uh, he got some reps in with the twos. Had some moments. Really good athlete. I'm excited to watch him this spring, but. Yeah, not a not a banner day for Jacoby Criswell at the office, I would not say. And uh, if y'all want, I mean, now we can just get right into it. The one thing we talked about that we were looking forward to is the seven on seven period. They said mm-hmm. they were going to open that one up, and normally the way they say they do it, twelve minutes. They went twenty minutes today. Yeah, that was, so a, that was long a long time, time man. Now yeah. look, we're, now this is just one day. I mean, it's a small sample size, but the sample size is going to grow. So over spring, we'll get to watch this. But I had Taylor Green as nine for eleven in that period. One of those being a drop by C.J. Brown, the freshman from yeah. Benville, who had a you know had some nice plays on the day. Criswell, I had him three for seven. I had Singleton three for five, and I had K.J. Jackson four for six. Austin Ledbetter three for six, QB one. <laughs> I tell you, uh, and Riker Aspo <laughs> leading the team in completion percentage three for three. So uh, Jonesboro, stand up, your boy was cooking the day. <laughs> yeah, had there a we couple go. nice ones. Uh, man, it was it was fun to watch, man. Yeah, yeah, you know the thing about Criswell is when he uh, when he just lets it eat, like he throws such a good ball. I mean, it, it's it's beautiful coming out of his hand. I mean, and even Pittman was saying that last year, and the guys too, like even compared to KJ, like he he can really let it rip, but uh, he, he's just so indecisive, man. And yeah. you notice that even in seven on seven, like there are no consequences. Like you kind of want to take some chances and let your DBs try to make plays and your wide receivers try to make contested catches. But there were times where he was just like tucking it and running. Yeah. In seven on seven. He tucked it and, and run in seven on seven twice, which yeah. is just tough. And that just tells you that, you know, maybe he's not he's just not seeing it well. Uh and he's overthinking a little bit out there. Yeah. And that's something that that happened last year. And obviously, uh first spring practice, new system, whatever, but this is a trend, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, whatever. Just a just a different feel with Green. And I the other thing I'll say about Green, and again, like they were in shorts and you can't hit the quarterback anyway, but uh, he's got some. He's got some legs, man. He like does. he can. He can get outside the pocket. I thought he looked good throwing when he was rolling out, uh, and he turned the corner a couple times. He's got some. Uh, he's got some. I don't want to say Matt Jones to him, but like he's Ooh. he's he's tall and he's the long reporter? and he's like deceptively fast, right, yeah. with those strides. So he might uh might be able to pick up some yards on the ground. Well, and it's funny too because. Uh, I was watching his throwing motion, which it's not bad, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's kind of. A, almost a hybrid between a sidearm and over the top. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, almost a diagonal, like a three quarter. He thing. reminds me of like a reliever that like yeah. throws it at an angle, and it's kind of just like a quick whippy, just yeah. <laughs> like it's not a like I don't know. It's it's a very there's interesting not a there's not a large wind up, but it's not a flick of the wrist either. It, it's just a very unique way of throwing yeah. the ball, and it works for him because again, he was pretty accurate and had some really nice deep balls there too. But uh, that was something to where. You know, first off, you get to see actually how tall he is. Like, we know he's tall. He came in here to the studio. We saw how tall he is. But yeah. when he's on the field and he's standing next to Sam Pivn, you're like, oh, my gosh, this guy, yeah. this guy towers over He's every bit everybody. of that 6'6", six, six, man. Yeah. yeah. And with that and his athleticism and his ability to, you know, throw the ball deep downfield, you can see why Bobby Trino likes him. Yeah. And you can see why he's like, yeah, this is my guy. This is who I want. This is what I want it to look like. And, uh, you know, we didn't get to see like a full install of offense. You know, I don't know if they're thirty percent yet, but they'll yeah. hopefully get to that twenty six percent, maybe yeah, you know, somewhere, somewhere in that range. But you you can definitely tell also too, just from the the formations and the plays that they ran. There's still those little Petrino imprints. A lot of slants, yeah, a lot of slants oh, being yeah. ran, a lot of play action, bootleg type stuff. So, uh, but yeah, for practice one, uh, you can tell he's com- <clears throat> Taylor Green's comfortable. You can tell that Petrino's comfortable with him being there, and. I even think the wide receivers like are feeling feeling pretty good about it too. I'll Dude. be honest with you, man. And so whoever's playing quarterback for Arkansas, it could be Taylor Green, it could be Malachi Singleton, whoever you want. Andrew Armstrong is going to get targeted early, yep. often. He might have a hundred catches, dude. dude. He's, he's <laughs> and he's always open. You mentioned the slants. It feels like that slant. We saw him catch. You know, just get wide open on those slants mm-hmm. all the time. Uh, seems like he's just going to be the safety blanket no matter what, which is not a surprise to anyone. But he looked really good. Uh, Tyrone Broden. With the David Tyree now number catch. five. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt, we were trying to figure out that. We were, Kurt was like, he reminds me, what's that New York Giants receiver? I was like, Odell Beckham? And we were like, oh, wait, no, David Tyree. Because oh, he, yeah. he caught one like over 
someone's back. And uh, it's I thought crazy. he looked good. I, dude, I'm telling you, if if mm. NFL scouts only came to practice and just ignored everything else, Isaac Teslaw would be a top three round pick. Dude. Yeah, he's, he's the a, he's best a practice player pick, of dude. all time, dude. He was snagging some <clears> play, some dudes, made some plays downfield. Uh, I mentioned C.J. Brown, the freshman from Bentonville. He had some nice plays. Satania, as always, like yeah. Another he's, guy. He's going to eat in that offense. He's going to eat yeah. in that offense for sure. But yeah, I thought the receiver room looked like what you would expect it to look like when you have as many guys they do returning. They all look like they've kind of raised their game a little bit. Yeah. So you know, I'm not trying to overreact. Jaden Wilson, number one now. He made a few nice little plays. Yeah. Um, it seems like all those guys. You know, we're not listing off a bunch of superstars here. Although I think Andrew Armstrong is as good as any Could receiver be, in the league. Uh, but I think all those guys are better. You know, like Tyrone Broden's a guy that we all were kind of waiting for that breakout. And I'm not saying it's coming right now, but he looked a lot closer to what we hoped he would look like last year than he did in reality yeah. last year. Even some of those young guys last year that you were excited about that didn't really get on the field, like, you know, today, again, it's one yeah. practice, but we are overreacting here. But like Davion Dozier, Dasmond James, like they making some plays James, out there. yeah. James yeah. got overthrown. Mm. There were a couple I had them written down, just kind of every throw. There were two times where Jasmine, Dasmond James got wide open and got mm-hmm. overthrown by somebody. Uh, but yeah, he made a couple nice plays. I think he had a he had a screen in fastball that he took like 15, 20 yards. Yeah, yeah, it was a, um, it was an encouraging day. One one thing I really like to see was Luke has looked like he's just like he never got hurt, yep. man. Like he picked he up right great. where he left Complete off. Complete participant. Yeah, yeah, he is just uh, he's him, man. He's gonna be so good. And you know, Tyrus Washington is is still working his way back. But hey, uh, I gotta get a little shout out to my man Varkey's Gums. Yeah, he's making plays out there. He is still on the team. He's still on the team. He's still on the team. Uh, he still exists, and uh, I think he actually. Uh, maybe looks the way he's listed on the roster in terms of height and weight because that was sure. a bunch of BS last year. Uh, but no, he's gotten a lot bigger and, and he was catching some passes out there, looked comfortable. So that was uh, that was nice to see too. Yeah, the quarterback position, of course, is one that you know we were all everybody's interested in because we talked about on the last pot of that nature, dealing with how that's going to be handled and that's how it's going to be treated with Petrino and and everything. And as far as the practices go, and I may lean, lean on y'all. A little bit more because I know you guys were here in Fable covering it. Was there any like major differences as far as how the practices went in spring from a year ago that you can remember? I know it's tough because you guys watch a lot of stuff and it's pretty boring most of the time. But was there any like significant differences at all that you noticed from a year ago? I don't think so. In terms of structure, uh, there was less. Spe- there they had a little bit of a punt period there, but there was less special teams. That's the one thing I remember yeah. about spring is they do a lot of special teams. We didn't see a ton mm-hmm. of that today. Uh, I don't think there was any like noticeable differences. I feel like you could tell it was day one, though. I'll just Absolutely. say that. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. say that as a knock or anything, but it felt like you could tell there was a little bit of some chaos. Guys yeah, not a little where confusion. To go. Yeah. A lot of co- I feel like every position coach I would go check on, they were yelling at somebody. Well, you yeah. saw Tykes Crawford getting yelled at a little bit. I saw some of the D-linemen yeah. getting yelled at a little bit. Like It's just one of those things where day one, <laughs> everyone's excited. Everyone's a little amped up. It's also 8 o'clock, so some of these college kids are probably – hung over who knows but <laughs> it seemed like the coaches had to like instruct and be a little more hands-on and so I think we'll know a little bit more about what the practice structure will look like and but yeah I was surprised by how much team just you know offense versus defense 11 on 11 they were running I mean that, that accounted for like a, a third of, of the that, practice man. so it's like yeah. we got a pretty good sample size of kind of having an idea of what this team looks looks like and by the way I see some people comment now Go ahead. If you have comments or questions about anyone in particular, get them in now. Because, I mean, you know, we don't want to sit here and go through the whole roster and just list our observations. But I got a good look at got a lot of just notes. about every position group. And so I feel like uh, I am qualified and equipped to answer your questions. So just let us know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was you know, nothing. I feel like it was nothing crazy out of the ordinary in terms of structure, though. I yeah. didn't think so either. Or at least from the different pr- spring practices I thought and, and saw. And it was usually during the Bielma era. But... Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it all transpires over time over these practices. Because I guess right now we just have scheduled practice for Saturday or tomorrow, right? Practice in the morning yes, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. And then is it Monday is the next and one? It's Monday Tuesday. or Tuesday is the next one. So, yeah, we'll have a little bit of an idea here in the early going. But then uh, look ahead towards, you know, just seeing how guys start fitting in. And you get an idea of who's, you know, the ones. I will say that I – looking at some of the defensive players – and I know we'll talk about different stuff here too. And since we're talking about the offense, but hmm. it's one of those things too where I start thinking about. I'm like, okay, is the offense good? Is, is the offense is it cooking? Is the wide receivers just good? Maybe quarterback good? Or is it like it was last year when it's like, man, this D line is feasting? Well, we were trying to be nice and talk about the fun stuff, John. Why'd you have to bring well, up the I'm, other I'm, side I'm of the ball? Just Jeez. throwing yeah. it up, throwing Listen, it up. I got and and again, I, I'm going to keep saying it over and over. It's the first day; they're in shorts, whatever. But the, I. I went into it with some worries about the defense, and um, 
those are still there. Mm -hmm. That linebacker room is thin, Dude, man. It is it is thin. very thin uh, in terms of depth and experience, and it it just it shows out there, man. Well, and also yeah. there was now Jaden Johnson lined up with a, at safety during fastball, which is kind of the where we pull our depth chart from. Yeah. That depth chart that you guys love to yell us at, at us about. That's where we get it from is fastball. Jade Johnson was at safety there, which you expect, returning starter. He was practicing with the linebacker group a lot. Now, in position drills, it seemed like there was some intermingling of, like, DBs, linebackers, linebackers with D-line. And so maybe a little bit of that was just by design. But Jaden Johnson, it looked like they were trying to get a look at linebacker. And I just think about it. They're going to need, you know, whether it's him or someone else, they're going to need some help other than the guys that are just listed. But Yeah, that's a portal <laughs> portal spot for sure. I, I, you know, and I'll be honest. <clears throat> we talked about the D-line a little bit, you know, leading up. I think that there's some pieces that we know. Like, obviously, Landon Jackson, yep. good. The June College mm -hmm. kid from Albany, like, he should be helping them in at least some way. Uh, Nico Davier is a guy that you know has had some moments here. Eric Gregory been a while, but just looking at that group, it looked a little like it just didn't look like an SEC defensive line room. It just really yeah. didn't. And I'll be honest with you, I see uh, vids for me wants to know about Junkaj. I was a little like, now I don't want to say underwhelmed. Just looking at him, I, he didn't pop to me. No. Which is, you know, it's one day of spring practice. It's not like we got to see him play for too much. But I just remember well, when Trey Williams from he transferred yeah. from Missouri, day one, you were like, oh, that guy's an SEC. That's a that's a starter for you. Exactly. Same with John Ridgeway. Same with Trey John Jeff Coat last year. Like it didn't take long for those guys. You just kind of you scan and you're like, oh wow. But like I, you know, Anton Junkosh, he could have been John Hill for all I know. Like yeah, they mm. they look they look pretty similar in terms of just size and looking like an SEC linebacker. Obviously, the season is not till. September, so there's time for all these guys to do whatever they got to do, transform their bodies. But, uh, yeah, that defense, man, just – and they were getting cooked by the offense, whether it was seven-on-seven, seven, team period, whatever. Uh, the offense was well, well, well ahead of the defense, mm -hmm. which is really not what you want, especially on day one. You feel like your defense should be a little bit ahead as the offense is implementing stuff, especially with a new coordinator. If this, if this Arkansas defense ends up being above average, Travis Williams might be a god, man. Like if this if this yep. defense that we that we're seeing on paper and at practice and look this is not an overreaction to day one of fall or spring practice because you know if you're looking at this roster on paper you're kind of wondering who's going to be the you know the safeties they you know they got some depth in the secondary some experience but like who's really the stars on this defense besides Landon Jackson and you know it's it's very early so I don't want to you know I'm not going to write their obituary yet but this defense has a lot of questions to answer between this spring and leading up to fall practice and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm I'm nervous about you know the possibilities of what it could be, but since again we're so far away, <clears throat> it's hard to really have any sort of you know hot takes or on that for the defense or the offensive side. However, we talked about quarterbacks and offense, but as far as just uh, some impressions of particular players, I know that we're we're gonna get to some of these questions too that people are asking in the chat. But a few things that stood out, at least I'll I'll go ahead and start it with uh, Braylon Russell is is large. <laughs> Big boy. <laughs> he's dude, big now. He's got some he's ass to him. Now. That dude is a true freshman, and I, I'm not saying that I've never seen a guy that size, but uh, talking with Kyle Parkinson, the SID, he's actually had to lose some weight. He came in, I think he said at 265 is what he came in at, and he's had to lose weight. Now, it's not bad weight. It's not like he's coming in looking <laughs> like, you know, yeah. chubby, but it, you could tell it's like, hey, they want to slim him down a bit, but still, like, he did not look like a true freshman running back. He looked like a guy that's been in the league for about three years. Yeah, he's huge, man. He, yeah, and it's all it's it's in his it's in his thighs and his backside. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's Junk got a, he's trunk. got a powerful lower half, if you will. Uh, but yeah, man, I, and I will say he had a couple pretty impressive plays and like yeah. big runs where he kind of you know broke free and and just hit the hole hard. So um, Sam Pippen said he really likes him. And, you know, you say that about all your guys, but he kind of singled him out from that regard. And I could see why, man. I mean, he's every bit as big as Dominic Johnson. And he looks, you know, a little bit more, maybe a little more shifty and a little more explosive already. So I I, uh, I liked what I saw out of him. And, and you know, talking about running backs, uh, the the Jackson kid from Utah. Yeah. He, uh, looks that dude the part, looks man. the part. And I was standing by Scotty and he was like, if there were ever a player who looked like they played at Utah, and he's just got that look about him, man. Like he's he's tatted up. He's just big, physical dude. And you think about those Utah teams, and sometimes you think about like the West Coast and the Pac-12. Like, oh, they're soft. Well, no, not Utah. Like mm. those guys, they they hit you in the mouth. They're physical. He's kind of got that build. And he's six two, every bit of two thirty five. And and it's another conversation, you know, that I was having with uh, with Kyle Parkinson. He was like, oh, he's one of the the transfers who came here and and has looked the part since he arrived. The dude had eight hundred yards rushing last season, and he's going to be a 
definitely in the mix there for sure. Again, with some of these transfer portal guys, it's like it's not a surprise that they're competent yeah. or that they're good, but it's just nice to see, you know. Like, I mean, for instance, Varkey's Gums last year, you look at his production, you're like, oh, he had 500 something yards in North Texas. He'll come right in here. Just kind of took him a while to get his footing. Mm. We'll see how it works in terms of the actual field for Jaquin and Jackson. <clears> but yeah, listed at 6'2, 235. He looked like he might be six four. He was tall, man. I thought he yeah. might yeah. be like six three, two twenty. But it's weird that he's like one of the smaller running backs they have at two thirty five. But I'll be honest, I like that whole group. I thought Rashad yeah. Dubinian, who got the first carries with the first group, which I feel like makes sense. You know, you're veteran. He's been there, kind of your most proven returning back. Uh, he looked good. I thought Dominique Johnson had a couple nice moments there. You know, you mentioned Braylon Russell had a few nice runs. Like I, I really liked what I saw from that entire running back room and. Which I guess and the natural August transition. might be the best one. Yeah. August, yeah, August yeah, might be the best one. He was running with the ones a good bit, had some nice ones. Uh, the offensive line, I think, if we're, if we're complimenting the running backs and we're saying, "Hey, Taylor Green was decisive, got the ball out, and did all this," I didn't notice any issues with the offensive line, and well, you know, they were there was some moving around. But I thought that early on, like that first group at least, looked a little bit more solid than maybe I expected on day one. Yeah, yeah, Carmona, Kudis. Um, Addison Nichols, Braun, and then Blackstock on that on yeah. that first offensive yeah. line group. Blackstock and Tykees Crawford, I guess, are kind of competing yeah, there. Bla- at right yeah, tackle. it looks like it. Yeah, Blackstock was running with the ones in fastball, and then when they got to some of the other team stuff, Crawford was in there a little bit of back and forth. Uh, but yeah, I thought that that group looked pretty solid in there. You know, for uh, for first day standards, and uh, I I really like you know what I saw from Eric Mateos, man. I yep. mean. Yep. That was one of the things I said when we were talking about this yesterday. Like, I wanted to get around that offensive line and see what the vibes are like uh, yeah. because it was just so weird last year with with Cody Kennedy and uh, I don't know, like something was just off with that group. Boy, I didn't feel that way today. Strong and yeah, Mateos was. Uh, I don't think he ever shut up, and and that's yeah. a good thing, man. Like he was very very uh, heavy handed with those guys while he was coaching, and he was letting them fly out there with uh, with some of the expletives, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but he was also. Uh, it wasn't just a, hey, do your effing job. It was, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. He was getting very, uh, very technical with stuff, and he was stopping and coaching those guys up every single rep. Uh, and he was doing it, and then Sam Pittman was down there doing it. And those two working with the O-line together, that was uh, that was pretty cool to see. I'm, you know, I'm excited about that group. I really am. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Sam Pittman, you know, I'm not saying this is a knock on Cody Kennedy because Sam Pittman liked Cody Kennedy a lot. That was his guy, and, you know, he trusted him. But you can tell he also really likes Mateos. And like they were yeah. there working together. And it was it was a nice little one two of like Pittman would maybe pull a player aside or say something like that. But it was like nice to see Mateos coaching the group. And it must be a little weird there where you're you're coaching your position group, but you've got maybe the best O line coach in the country the, looking over your shoulder and your watching. Boss. <laughs> so it was cool to see him getting into those dudes in front of Pittman. And you can just tell that those dudes have a good relationship. Yes. And Pittman, yeah. you know, gave gives him his blessing to coach them the way that Pittman knows how to coach this O-line and all that. But, yeah, I just thought that group, Carmona, by the way, who we mentioned was a all-conference center at San Jose State last year, starting at left tackle. He was one of the more vocal guys from that group. Yep. Uh, Josh Braun, who, if you want to hear more from Josh Braun, go check yeah, out the Boss Hogs vocal. podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely vocal, definitely a well-spoken guy. But Carmona was the guy early in practice giving them the juice and saying some expletives himself of kind of, hey, let's get mm-hmm. this thing going. Let's get it going, man. Yeah. Let's have some energy. And so I it was like, like him a lot, man. Yeah. It was cool. And, you know, you know, like you said, Curtis, the vibes with the O-line were so bad last year. It seemed like everyone on the, that position group, I don't know if they hated each other, hated their coach, hated life. I don't know what it was. but <laughs> Lost there was their just love no, of football. <laughs> yeah, lost their love of football, apparently. There just wasn't that energy. There wasn't that communication. But I, I like seeing those guys interact. And mm-hmm. I just felt like offensively, this offense seems a little bit ahead of schedule which, you know, by Petrino, we shouldn't be too surprised, but I was I guess I was surprised by how sharp everything yeah. looked. From the O line, receivers, quarterback, running back, like they just seemed a lot more in sync than you would expect day one of spring practice. And I cannot say the same for the defense. So it's not like I'm just sunshine pumping here. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. going back to the offensive line and talking about last year, you know, one of the things I always thought, and you know, this is just my reckless theory, is that you had Cody Kennedy, who originally came in as the tight ends coach. Mm-hmm. You remember because it was it was yep. Brad Davis was that his yeah. name the LSU uh, who went, ended up going to LSU, and I think the entire plan that Sam Pittman Hayes really like Cody Kennedy is coming as a tight ends coach and then learn by Brad Davis until you're ready to go and then and search you and then I think when Brad Davis left Sam Pittman maybe made the mistake of like promoting him way too before he was ready, and That's you know that can really kill a lot of the things that you got going on where you know you're throwing him in there and then there's a disconnect and then there's issues. It's like I think that Cody Kennedy could end up being a really good offensive line coach. But I think that just the timing of him being put into that spot and into that position was uh, just not fair to him. And that's where with Mateos, 
I think it's going to work out so much better, not only just because it's someone different, but also he at least has been a legitimate offensive line coach in high-level college football coming from Baylor. And so, and learning from Sam Pittman in previous years. So, and he coached Arkansas in that Liberty Bowl when Alex Collins ran for 200. So, I mean, if that, if that alone should give you that the experience goosebumps. really launched him. But yeah. also, you heard it here from John Neighbors first Mississippi State's going to have a great O line. Cody Kennedy got his reps. Now he's ready to be Eventually. a coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like, <laughs> One that, day. That was about like uh, you last night when you were like, oh, you heard it here first. Curtis Wilkerson says Caleb Battle's coming back. <laughs> yep. Now he's tweeting. Cur- first he's reported, tweeting me. <laughs> first reported by Curtis Wilkerson via oh, text man. message. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's, that's what I, uh, that's why I, I like uh, the offense and offensive line. I think I, I agree with you guys on everything, too, on that. A um, few comments, real quick, though, because I know uh, yeah. we got a lot of people in the, in the chat. Uh, well, this comes from uh, Jaron. He's like, any chance Satania gets more targets this year? I think yes. absolutely. Yeah, I think no he question. absolutely should. One, because he didn't have a ton of targets last year. And look, I don't know where he ranks in the pecking order, whether it's two, three, four in that receiver room, but I think all those guys are going to get targeted a good bit. I just think I really liked what I saw from him. I think he's he's maybe the X factor in that room. Really. I want him to be the Jerry's yeah, right, man, like the slot receiver. I want him to be that. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's – not a horrible comp there. I no. mean, he's so smooth, dude. He's such a mm. smooth athlete and just seems like getting in and out of his breaks, like, seems like getting open is just very easy to him and Andrew Armstrong. Well, we were wondering why he wasn't getting on the field and, and getting more snaps last year. And, and Sam Pittman told us that he was having trouble with drops. I did not see him drop a pass today, and we were there for the whole practice. Yeah. I just want to throw that out there. I only saw one drop yeah. with my own two eyes, and it was Davion Doja. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, Satania looked good, man. He's just one of those guys who, uh, you know, He's so fast and so explosive, but there are obviously things that he can refine. And Petrino's so particular about like just being perfect in your route running. So if he adds that with his speed, like that dude's oh, gonna yeah. be open all the time. And all I mean, the look, time. <laughs> to answer your question though, like yeah, he should get. But I also projected him to be one of their top receivers last year. I thought he was gonna That's be like fair. a big thing. So who knows? I mean, we 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 never really know. Sometimes this coaching staff they don't like to play the better players for whatever reason. That's not up to, you know, it just, it just happens. Sometimes you have Nudie McGlothern and he's just not your, one of your top two corners. I don't know. Sometimes you have Isaiah Satania and don't, you don't give him the ball, but we'll see. I, I think he's going to be more than just a gadget player this year though. If I had to guess. Also, uh, Trent says, I know we alluded to it a little bit, but how's the D line and linebackers look like Bad. the linebackers yeah. are sus, man. Dude. Okay. Right now, they do I'd... a drill called inside run, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's inside run. They just have the linemen, the quarterbacks, the running backs, the linebackers, and they just run right up the middle. And uh, the offense was winning the drill substantially, which just should not happen. No, there's no if and it's no weird stuff. It's we're running the ball right up the middle. We're tr- working on our schemes, working on whatever. And like they were rack- racking off big runs in that drill. Uh, I am very, very concerned about Arkansas's physicality in the front seven. I think it's just it just does not look like what you want your front seven to look like if you're about to go play in the SEC. Um, we'll see. I mean, this roster is going to change a little bit over the course yeah. of the summer. Uh, we were talking at practice today about how they didn't add Jaheim Thomas until pretty late in the process last year, and he was maybe their best linebacker last you year. So it's like, like that. Yeah. yeah. Could or use a few Jaheim Thomases. <laughs> you know who they could use? Jaheim Thomas, yeah, who I believe yeah. is somewhere else. Yeah, but, uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin now. Yeah, it would just be nice to see them get some bodies in there because, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm not impressed with the group right now, but, I mean, they're like two injuries away from being – Toast really in a situation. Tough spot. So uh, yep. to answer your question, Trent, not good. Yeah, linebackers. <laughs> I'm linebackers. I'm concerned. Period. Uh, yeah. And and I think you know Xavier Sori looks looks the part, the Georgia kid. Uh, but he was he was having a heck of a time there yeah. early on with just some of the like the fundamental drills they were doing, the the lateral footwork, and he had to keep going back and doing it because he was kicking the pads or whatever. Uh, but I'm worried about them in whole defensive line. I think I feel good about maybe the starters or the, the yeah. front group, but the depth there. Uh, is probably something I'm concerned yeah, like about. Like if right Lynn now. Jackson were to get hurt, you know, knock on wood. Yeah. I don't know how Arkansas would get any push no. on the D line. I mean, because right. I like I like some of these guys. Like I like Nico Davier. You know, I, I like Cam Ball a lot, but it's like, I don't know, man. I just you need you just don't have you that need dude numbers, besides man. Mm-hmm. You need numbers too. And so it's like I'm looking for playmakers, looking for dudes to step up. And hey, this is this is day one of spring. Yeah, There's plenty yeah. of time for these guys to emerge. I might come in here tomorrow and say it looked great. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean it's very possible, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh look, who knows? Yeah. I like uh I like Xavion Sori just from the linebacker perspective transfer from Georgia, but I have a hard time was, believing he won't be at least decent. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm I don't I don't think he's gonna be to the level of like a Drew Sanders, but can he be a I don't know. Just uh, Jaheim poop, Thomas. Poop hall. <laughs> Jaheim yeah. Thomas is our our baseline. We just need like yeah. Well, that's, and that's Jaheim the unfortunate Thomas. thing about the linebackers is like last year. Yeah, you lost all your linebackers, but they're all still playing college football, and that's what sucks. That's right. because if you had all those guys coming back, if you had Chris Paul back, if you had Jaheim Thomas back, if you had 
all of them, everyone's like, it'd be borderline dude, linebacker. strength of the team. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You'd be like, you're feeling true. really good about it, but you just got gutted, yeah. and now you're relying on Brad Spence and yeah. a, str- a transfer from Georgia that wasn't didn't really play. Right. That's it's it's worrisome, and yeah. it's about you know forget how it's just starting the depth. Right. Don't, you know, you're going to get a guy's hurt. They're going to get banged up. The good thing about time. linebacker is like. You, you don't have to have quite as many. Like D-line, you really do need like yes. 10 dudes. Linebacker, if they can just get like four guys that I am confident are competent SEC football players, that would be a huge win to me. Um, I think we're looking at like maybe two right now, and that would yeah. be Sori and Spence. And Sori, mm-hmm. who we had, saw, had some growing pains today. And Brad Spence, and- I like a lot. I really do like him a lot, but he's he's barely played. You know, he's, a, yeah. he's entering his second year of college football. They have a couple – young guys who aren't on campus yet in that linebacker room. One of the one of the guys is a high like a highly rated recruit that they got in late. Um and you know, it, it could always be like the baptism by fire thing, like they did with Bumper yeah. Pool. Yeah. You know, right. when he came out, nobody was expecting him to be in there right away. Uh they had an injury, you throw him in there and then, you know, he becomes he becomes great. And he had his ups and downs obviously as a freshman, yeah. but he was effective and he helped. And it might be a situation where they need a guy to pull that off. Or maybe it's yeah. a a redshirt freshman or what, like an Alex Sanford or something, or your boy Dean or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But. Well, it just sucks because at least Bumper Pool had one year of Dre Greenlaw to look up to. And yeah. I think yeah. Scooter Harris might have been there. Mm-hmm. You just wish you had that hierarchy yeah. of like a returning guy. Like, for instance, Poo Paul is really the guy who like is the biggest one that's like missing, where it's yeah. like if this team had Poo Paul, I would feel not completely differently about the whole team, but mm-hmm. just on that defense, knowing a guy that's like a vocal leader, especially for that room to kind of guide some of these dudes along. You do, they just don't have a guy like that up in the front seven, other than Landon Jackson, who is an owes a stud. He's an NFL yeah. player, all SEC dude, uh, and I and a leader for them, like for sure. But he he just you know you need more than that. Yeah, I even look back also where you mentioned some of those linebackers. Arkansas hasn't been. It felt like for a while there, maybe like in the Houston Nut era, especially you always had pretty high quality linebackers, at least quite a few. But then it seems like every single year since then. You've really only had like a one, maybe a two, you know, where you had Dre Greenlaw, you had a Martrell Spate, yeah. uh, then you had, you know, a guy Scooter. like Scooter. Yeah, you had you had these players that were just dudes, but you only had one of them. And then if you had two of them, I mean, for kind of line, this is nothing against them. You know, in 2021, Arkansas is the best season they've had in 10 years. I mean, their three linebackers were Grant Morgan, Bumper Pool, and Hayden Henry. You know, like two of those guys are walk on. You know, so it's they that's all work. What at, they all work at banks in Fayetteville right now. <laughs> yeah, like, but it's it's true. But <laughs> shout it's, out to Tyler. Spurman. Yeah, he's like he's like, hey, listen, he he knows it. But it's like that's but that's the thing. Is like you just did, you want your linebacker room to look good, but it just feels like Arkansas. It's kind of like almost having a starting a great starting rotation and pitching like on a yeah. weekend. It's like it's so tough at Arkansas for whatever reason to get three of them yeah. that, that are really good in, at linebacker, but. They, I do want to clarify. One or two. We should we should go ahead and just throw out the disclaimer. I I feel like we I, I gloss over Brad Spence a little bit because I do like him a lot. No, like, oh, I think, yeah, he's, yeah, I think yeah. he's a guy that's really going to help him. So maybe that's your X factor. Is maybe this kid is just special, mm-hmm. and so maybe if he emerges into being like that spark plug who's going to get a hundred tackles yeah. and who's going to be like an every down like don't have to worry about him type of dude, maybe it makes us feel a little bit different. But it's just like. It's tough to go into an off season expecting this nineteen year old to yeah. carry your room. Yeah, it's ideally he would be your rotational guy yeah. this like year. Like Paul was as exactly. a redshirt freshman, you yeah. know, where he got to kind of ease his way in mm-hmm. while Bumper Pool was getting hurt. Yeah. That's yeah, that's yeah. a great point. And so that's where yeah, I think I think you're gonna have two like quality or at least good enough linebackers. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is after that, <laughs> like yep. you, yeah. you just don't know, and, and it's all over. Keep the those place. boys in bubble wrap for the next yes. six months. Yes, <laughs> do do whatever you need to do. Uh, let's see. Chase says, hey, I just want to see Bob yell at somebody. Well, he didn't really didn't do that today. Not today. Kind of yelling yeah. today, yeah. but uh, you know, First I think. He's he's he got he's on the guys a little bit in. about getting in a getting in the huddle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, yeah. Well, and also he saw there was a there was fifty media members out there today. He was like, "Let me be on my best behavior." They're all waiting for me to yell. Let me just wait till day three. He was yeah, chilling, man. and you know, like he was he was talking a lot. Like he was interacting with the players. He's yeah. talking oh, yeah. to quarterbacks before every play and after every rep and all that. For but sure. yeah, he yeah. wasn't uh, wasn't super animated. John, I, you were around them a little bit more. Like yeah. I, I, every time every time I would try to like when a quarterback would come off from whether it was team or seven on seven or whatever, when they would come off the field, I'd always just like watch to see how Bobby interacted with them and like just seeing him talk to those guys. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. And just kind of letting your imagination run. And you're like, what's he saying to mm-hmm. Austin Ledbetter right now? What's he saying? Well, you know, but I think, uh, I think you could already tell right away. And like, I know we're being a little dramatic with this Taylor green stuff, but you can tell he and Taylor have some type of rapport where it's like, they don't even have to say a ton, but there, that communication is there. I like the way that, 
he was re-interacting with his guys. It was pretty cool. Yeah, and, and another thing that stood out to me about that, just from a body language standpoint, is a lot of times, you know, a coach will be talking to a player, getting on them or whatever, and they've got their head down or they're kind of walking away. Every single time I looked over at, at Petrino talking to a guy, you couldn't hear what they were saying, but I saw a helmet nodding. Mm-hmm. I saw a bobblehead Leader every single men. time. Yeah. They're uh, listening. They're it, picking up what he's putting down. Well, and also, too, like just from what I saw and, you know, getting, couldn't hear everything he was saying, but there were times where he was just approaching it as, you know, kind of with his like little book, his little binder or whatever, if I mm-hmm. point over right here and doing this and everything. But yeah, it was just, you could just tell he has, a, he has an expectation and he has a standard. And you were talking about not really talking with Taylor Green. I'm not trying to make the comparison, but it's just saying one thing that people maybe forget is that, you know, Petrino never had to rip Ryan Mallett. Yeah. Petrino never had to get after Ryan Mallett. And the reason being is because him and Ryan Mount were on the same page. They, 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 were, they were very much in cohesion. So they, if he made a mistake, he already knew, like, everything. I'm not saying that that's exactly what Taylor Green have, but going back to the whole reason, like, that's, this is Petrino's guy. He's the one selected him. He likes something about him. I feel like there's probably a little bit of that to where it's like, I don't have to yell at this guy. I don't have to coach him up. I was like, he knows what I expect. He knows what he's supposed to do. He's going to make mistakes, but, and we're going to coach him, but I feel comfortable enough to where I don't need to be on his rear end all the time. That's what I'm hoping it's going to end up being. Well, it's it's just worth noting that Taylor Green is the only quarterback on this roster that Bobby Petrino recruited himself. You yeah. know, that he had a hand in. Like, obviously, K.J. Jackson was committed. I'm sure that he spoke to him once he got the job and all that. But, I mean, like, Taylor Green, he re- that was that was the guy that he chose out of yep. the portal. You know, I don't know what his options were. I don't know if it was an extensive list. I don't know how detailed that process was. But I think that has to count for something that – of all the guys on this roster, that there's any, there's not a ton of familiarity, familiarity with any of them. But Taylor Green is the one that Bobby had a hand in bringing to campus, and so that has to matter. And yeah, you, it and does. It and after to. one day, it seems like it matters a lot. Yeah, because even Chase went on to say, and he's like, the most in, inexperienced guy on the on oh, the team. Oh, without and question, room, and, sure. and everybody knows who he is. Like these players, yes, they're young, but they know who Bobby Petrino is. They know oh, yeah. Lamar Jackson. Like they know this guy is legit. And I don't even care. If you didn't know him before, seeing the reaction from Razorback fans, which I know those players saw when he got hired, they're like, yeah. okay, this is weird. Like, why are they being this way about this particular coach? So I think that there's just an element of respect and element of uh, we, we know this guy, and if we didn't know him, we know him now because everybody's so stoked about this guy, and it has to be for some reason. Yeah. And just it's because like, he's really good. What's that MF stand for? BMF. Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah, MF yeah, stand I never heard MF in those letters together and whatever, whatever it meant, but <laughs> – uh, yeah. T- I'm just now noticing that it really does say juicy nugget tidbits from the intense practices. <laughs> Dude, like I'm telling you, we got to get the people going. We got to get them hyped. <laughs> and that's those are the types of words that you got to use to get people. Uh, I, was, I saw in. somebody that came in late and didn't see our how, let's talk about the first quarterback thing. Yeah. Whoever you think the starting quarterback is, just go with that instinct. Yeah. 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 Well, it's yeah, like roll we- with that one. Well, it's like Wes says he's like he's in late, but he's like, do we have a but do we have a big gap between Green and Criswell? Yes, an yes. entire other quarterback, actually. Yeah, but yes. like Criswell was not running with the twos <laughs> today. So, yes, uh, Malachi Singleton and K.J. Jackson worth of a uh, gap between them. I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm just I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I have a hard time believing Jacoby Criswell will be on the team in three months. I, I have a hard time believing it. And if he is, cool. Like, you know, maybe, or at least all the quarterbacks staying on the roster. Like, sure, we'll go with that, either. but just look yeah. at the body language and the vibes of him yeah. in particular. Did not look like a guy who uh, was ready to put his best foot forward and compete for this quarterback. Yeah, he needs to have a big day tomorrow. Yeah, needs to have a big day. And I mean, look, physically, whatever. But we were just talking about Bobby interacting with all these guys. I don't know if I can remember a time where he and Bobby were like close together, talking about anything. Like, I did not. Uh, I did not like the vibes from number six today. But uh, we'll see. I mean, it's very early. We're gonna overreact tomorrow too. So who knows? Mm-hmm. Tomorrow we might have cause the complete opposite mm-hmm. take. Yeah, and I and I'm not putting this out there just for the sake of putting it out there, but. You know, it could be one of those deals where maybe Criswell was like, hey, or got told, hey, just letting you know this is our guy. We're going with Green. When the window opens up, we recommend maybe you get into it, but he can't do it. So you're like, but you can still come to practice, still get some reps in, get some stuff in. Yeah. I that I could see that as far as like maybe not the talking to him, maybe not the body language, because it's not like the writing's on the wall. Everybody knows it. Everyone's okay with yeah. it, but you just got to wait until that window actually I mean, a fifth-year senior up. running third team at spring practice, yeah, I feel like if that's not writing on the wall. I don't know what is, yeah. but we'll see how it plays out. I mean, look, Jacoby, I mean, I think there's a lot of fans that like him, and he's clearly, like like Curtis was saying, when he when you see moments when he's decisive and lets it rip, he clearly is a talented quarterback Very. who can play. There's plenty of places he can start, you know, and I'm sure he'll, he, you know, he, he will look, in, look into that, but I just don't think it's going to be at the University of Arkansas, and... uh you know, we'll see. But, you know, again, it's very early. So there's plenty of time. If he's going to, maybe there's time for one last push. But 
I did not get the vibe at practice today that like this was a legitimate no. competition playing out. No. Also, uh, Miss Lisa, love Miss Lisa. She says, I remember when Alex Tejada missed a f- small field goal and Coach P asked him if he missed it on purpose. It's a legitimate question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Fair enough. It, he missed it that badly. <laughs> He's, He's like, hey. if it were up to me, that bottle would have just went through the uprights. <laughs> like, I don't know why you chose to not put it through the yeah, uprights. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, 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 we practiced this, Alex. You know, you're supposed to go th- in, in between the goals, right. like over it, like Especially in there. Especially when we're spot. short distance. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to make that happen. Springdale legend, Alex Tejada. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Devin says, any freshman linebackers coming in in the fall that could help? Again, I don't know if I want freshman linebackers. Have I, you, I know yeah. it's the situation you're in, but like I don't ever want to say, man, we got to get this freshman on campus be, at linebacker because well, he's going to have to help. Yeah, I I mean, the kid that. they the kid they got late that was he, I mean he was deciding between Arkansas and Clemson, I think, yeah, and Juju yeah. Clemson Pope. won out. Uh, so yeah, you got you got him in there, and and that's going to be that's going to be also helpful. listed at two hundred three though. The uh, the Bradley yeah. Shaw kid though is the kid from Hoover, Alabama, yeah. is the one that I'm excited about. Um, I mean, he was uh, I mean at twenty four seven sports, he's a top top two four seven player. He's a high four star. So um, was it was he Hoover's the one that, a good program? Was he the one that chose between Arkansas Hoover's and Clemson? Hoover's a loaded football program. He's They're, the one that chose between Arkansas and Clemson. Okay, yeah, yeah, Bradley Shaw. Make sure, Hoover yeah. High's football stadium looks. It's better than Arkansas. They had their States. own show. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, on, it's, on, t- it's on television too for a while. massive, dude. Yeah, when that was called two, two days. days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he's he's five eleven, but that's what I'm saying. It's like yeah, Juju Pope's another one. Where, yeah, so. Juju Juju Pope shows up and he's just a stud, maybe, hey. but he's listed at six foot two oh three, and so it's like that's in in linebackers are never guys that when you're recruiting them, you're like, hey, they'll help us right away. Mm-hmm. You kind of yeah. want them in D line into season for a little bit. Listen, Sam Ola Jabutu was five foot nine. Okay, and he put he was, he was an all SEC. Sam Elijahbutu ain't walking through that door. Yeah, uh, that'd be nice if he was though. <laughs> Jerry Franklin ain't walking through that Jerry door. Jerry Franklin, yeah, get him. <laughs> the and SEC Jer- career tackles leader or whatever the hell he was. Yeah, get him and yeah. Anthony Leon and Jericho Nelson. Just just get all oh, yeah. them, those types of players because. Uh, what about Rudell Krim? Can we bulk him up and make him a linebacker? Where's what's he doing nowadays? Dude, yeah, I bet he is. He coaches a lot, so he could probably uh, come in there. Yeah. Uh, Caleb also asked, uh, did Satania redshirt last year? I don't think no, he did. Yeah. He redshirted as a true freshman because he was banged up a lot. But now he he played. Last year, I mean, he was. I mean, he was the punt returner. He he had yeah. some moments last year. Uh, as Sam said it the other day, you saw more of in punt return. You saw what kind of athlete he is. They haven't gotten it to translate to offense yet. I think it's only a matter of time. I don't think he's one of those like punt return gadget dudes that is never going to actually be a receiver. Yeah, I think he's a much better receiver than this coaching staff gives him credit for. No, I agree. Also, Sharkinsaw says in the brief clips I saw posted, Taylor looked like he was the guy. And seemed pretty confident. Could also just be a size, but he kind of has that look about him. He absolutely has that look about him. I, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it was so a fair. feel more like Andrew said early on. Like we're we're not sitting here saying that uh, he was just out there looking electric, like he's you know Jalen Hurts or something out there. I mean he uh, he made some mistakes yeah. and he missed on some throws, just like anybody else. But yeah, just the you could just tell mm-hmm. it, it was just different. It's different. Yeah, it's and absolutely. So different. I think. Uh, I think had that look about him is a pretty good way to sum it up. Also, if you want to see more clips, yeah, we do have that full video up on the Natty State Sports YouTube yeah, page. Check that we out. also tweeted that out. It's on Facebook too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we really got, good. We got about 15 minutes worth of practice footage. Got Legit- them boys some, in 4K. Some good mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And, and you, Chase, I know you love you some Bobby. We got plenty of Bobby uh, Petrino uh, video <laughs> of him just doing yeah. things, just pointing. Talking, you know, <laughs> uh, moving a guy over here. Like, yeah, we yeah. got we got a lot love of good, a lot of good Petrino stuff. Uh, but Chase also says, is the running back room too heavy? Now, I think this is an interesting question because, you know, last year about Rocket Sanders, everyone was talking about his size. And Turned out to be too heavy. <laughs> yeah, it, it is too heavy on his feet, apparently. But also, you think about this year, we mentioned Braylon Russell coming in as a true freshman. Yeah. We, we already mentioned about, uh, of course, I already forgot the Utah transfer. Um, Jackson, yeah. Jackson, yeah. Jackson. Jaquindon yeah. Jackson. Jaquindon Jackson. Yeah. Jackson. We mentioned his size. We know Dominic Johnson's already been a, is a big guy. I mean, really, it's like Rashad Dabinian. And I guess uh, August is like 210 or 212. Yeah. Like and those are the really, small uh, guys. And yeah, they had he's to up to 212. And he, I thought he looked, you could tell, like last year, aside yeah. from the Emmanuel Crawford kid, like Augustov was clearly the freshman of the group. Yeah. Like so much smaller. But he's, he looks good, man. Yeah, Augustov yeah, looks like, I mean, he looks, his progression, I mean, he started to make some strides mm-hmm. down the stretch as a freshman. Looks like he's a little bit better, a little bit bigger, a little bit faster, a little bit stronger. I, I really do think the running back room, I, their, I like their, their weights are going to be smaller. Like, they're going to cut these dudes down. Like, oh, yeah. Braylon Russell's yeah. not going to be that big. I would, Dominic Johnson's probably not even going to be that big. Russell um, will be like 235 by fall. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but the Jackson kid, his his 235 is a good 235. Yes, it is. He, he looks awesome. And so he looks the part, I, I don't think overall, and I think, I mean, the top three running backs could very well end up being Dubinian, Augustov, and Jackson. 
and Jackson's the biggest of that group at 235. So I, I don't think the main backs are too heavy. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think their weights are going to be that well, big. But. And, I, and I hate to keep comparing it always to the old Petrino teams, but again, like you forget, like Roger Green was a big running big back. Boy. Ronnie Ring- Wingo was like 6'2", 6'3". Mm-hmm. Petrino you know, loves having his two through four backs being extremely yeah. big. But then, but, <laughs> then if you think, but then if you think about Nile Davis, Nile Davis was a he was like, like five foot man. nine, five foot ten, but he was two third. Dennis Johnson. Dennis it's Johnson like a bowling big, ball. Boy. So it's just you know, I think that there's just the size that these guys are, and they're going to trim them or bilk them or whatever. Maybe, but maybe you're too small, Petrano. Chase. Yeah. Maybe you're too small, bro. Yeah. Maybe that's what's, maybe that's Dominion's problem. Maybe he won't play this year because he's yeah. just too small. Yeah, we like, we like right. our dub, but he's just too little, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need but some big boys But that's here. the thing. Like they, the, Petrino's always love big, tall quarterbacks and big, thick running backs. Hey, that's you don't want to – if you're going to run through – if you're going to drive through a brick wall, you don't want to have a Honda Civic. No. You want to have an F two fifty. Yes. You want to have a big boy. Big old boy. Was what, wasn't Michael Bush? You guys remember him? That played for Louisville. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, he yeah. was like a big running yeah, back he too was. For, for, for for Petrino. So yeah, they've had Wendell a lot. Of White. Uh, Limbo says, does the O line look better this year? They have no chance, but I mean, no choice but to look <laughs> yeah. better. But they look, yeah, they look good today. They could not be worse. But yeah, they did, they actually did look better. I like did. I like the move of uh, of Kudis inside. Uh, the new guys, the new additions. Uh, you know, obviously, you got your eyes on them a little bit more just because they're they're the fresh faces that you need to step in there. But I mean, good sized guys, <laughs> big personalities. I like them. Yeah, and, and I mean, look, many people are. We need to start having this discussion. Did Natty State Sports save the Arkansas football program? Because last year I, there was that clearly a huge disconnect with the offensive line. All of a sudden, now we got this awesome podcast up and running with the offensive linemen where they're becoming best friends. We're seeing their friendship formed on camera, dude. If and you, now if you go you, out there to practice and they're cooking. Seems yeah. like uh, the vibes are restored. You're welcome, Razorback fan base. Uh, but honestly, if if you're wondering about this offensive line and just the camaraderie, the vibes, everything like that, listen to the Boss Hog podcast, yeah. man. No, it, seriously, it, seriously, it's really like it's it's really really good stuff, and uh, you get to know these guys on on a different level, and it's just. Um, I don't know. It, it's just refreshing for all the reasons you've already mentioned yeah. about how weird it was last year. I, I like if we would have brought you know three offensive lineman in his room last year and, and had yeah. them riff like it probably would have lasted like 12 minutes and then Bo Limmer would have just know? been over there eating nails trying uh right. wanting to go hit the weight room he wouldn't have had anything to say yeah squatting yeah. the uh the <laughs> building over here yeah so. but yeah. i will say i think the key with the offensive line room so addison nichols was starting it he was with the first team at center and he's the transfer from tennessee who has played a little bit kind of like braun last year it was like a yeah. sec experience but hadn't been like a full-time starter I think if he wins that center job and is able to stick there and they have Carmona at left tackle, yeah. I trust Carmona no matter where he's at, whether yeah. he's a yep. right tackle, left tackle, center, guard, whatever, I will trust him. So if they can have him at left tackle, give you some stability, give you some experience there, have Nichols at center, Braun and Kudis both, I feel like, are Good set of guards. potential yeah. NFL guards right yeah. there. And then I think at right tackle, whoever comes out of that, you know, Crawford and uh, Blackstock It's going to be battle, Blackstock. Yeah, I, think I would is. imagine it'll be Blackstock. We've done this with I Crawford. Think bo- <laughs> I think both of those guys are – I mean, in Crawford, I don't, I, I'm kind of with you. But I think both those guys are NFL caliber offense, like, talents. And so I think, mm. you know, whoever comes out of that is going to end up earning it and being a dude. So it's like, I don't know what spot you would be looking at where you're like – like maybe Kudis at left guard, but Kudis, man, Kudis might be the most talented out of all these yeah. cats we're yeah. talking about, yeah. you know? And, and so I, I feel like he's going to be a lot better this year. I don't know where they're at with depth yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah you we'll see, see of, about that. Mar- especially Marian since Harris. Uh, their all SEC freshman team uh, tackle lost his love for the game. Right. Uh, so that, that's he's not done one. yet. He might go um, find it somewhere. But he's I will not say, done yet. Not done yet. Now, does is that football? Is that whatever? Who knows? Um, Amer- for the Amerian Harris fan base, uh, I was a little surprised to see him running with the threes today. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy that played in the Liberty Bowl as a true freshman, and kind of it seems like they're waiting on him to take that step. He's the same size now as he was like then. He looks like Marcus Henderson. He's giving me extreme Marcus Henderson vibes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. But I think, yeah, the depth is kind of the concern there, and so we'll see how we feel after an injury or two. But I think that starting group that we saw today and just kind of what we know about these dudes coming in, like I feel like there's yeah. not like a ton of spots that are going to give you a ton of – like you're not yeah. the staff's not losing sleep over it. And I think this time last year, they were losing sleep over it. All right, guys. Anything else uh, we want to add before we close up shop? I know we got another practice tomorrow that we'll be able to yeah. recap, but any other things, nuggets, juicy, nuggeted tidbits? Yeah, I think I would like to say that Hudson Clark's practice jersey was way too large. It was. Uh, Curtis Curtis leaned over to me during practice. He said, Hudson Clark, he's small again. You know, last <laughs> year he like bulked up and he kind of he kind of looked jack, like looked ripped a little bit. He's like, oh, okay. Small again. I don't know if it was his practice jersey was too big. I don't know, but uh, Dude. we we do have a we do have a shout out too that we need to give. Oh, to uh, 
wide receiver number 86, Walker Katsevis. That is a very good point, Curtis. Hat, so we cannot get out of here without mentioning this dude. So every year, really like every team, every football team ever, there is a white receiver, walk on usually, who just cooks at these practices for whatever reason. Yep. John David White is probably it's the most Super famous Bowl. example of this. Harper Cole is another one that was a legend. Uh Cameron Bibby, who's still on the team, he he, I think mm. he's on scholarship now. Mm -hmm. Drew Morgan used to be until he became actually a good wide receiver. This right, might same the, thing. This you know might what I mean? The Cat Savage well, uh, trajectory here. Crosby Cameron, talk. <laughs> Cameron Bibby was this guy, and then now he's on scholarship, and I didn't see him do anything today. And so it's like yeah. kind of being a walk on in your first few years is kind of the say his name again, Curtis Walker Cat Savis. Walker Cat Savis. Smith Northside snagged on Jalen Braxton, snagged who actually, him, by the way, had a good day. Jalen yeah. Braxton had good reps against Andrew Armstrong. So it's not like we're saying this is like, oh, you should be worried. <laughs> yeah. But Cat Savis, it was actually a Criswell throw that he had kind of underthrew. Cat Savage just makes an adjustment and just poof, back shoulders it. And I was like, man, who yeah, is this You grabs, man, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. John dropped a Lucas Miller comp for him. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, we're going back to the days of, uh, you know, Greenwood High School, and Lucas Miller kept catching that pass from Darren McFadden against yeah, Auburn. And yeah, yeah. Doing the you can't see me type <laughs> of celebration. That. So, but yeah, he's our guy. So if yeah. you see these yeah. practice videos and I, they haven't, they didn't let us film seven on seven today. But if they let us film seven on seven, you'll probably be like, who's this number eighty six shrimp white guy who's just cooking these guys? He's cooking the snacks, cooking everyone. Uh, snacks had a couple nice really reps today. He, he did good yeah, reps. He, he celebrated yeah. a lot after that one. Mm. Yeah, I think it was Tesla. Mm -hmm. that he batted away a deep ball against, and he really he celebrated for like the next four reps. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, Cat Slavis, man, that's, that's the, the star of the day so far. Yep. MVP. Mm -hmm. Give him the scholarship if he doesn't have one already. So Well, you mentioned Dasmond James, but I did want to give him another little quick shout-out. Yeah. Pittman talked about him the other day in the press conference as like a younger receiver who they're hoping can jump into that like top five or six group. And I remember when he said it, I kind of was like, hmm. I didn't see a ton out of Desmond James. He didn't. He didn't quote unquote bite as a freshman, as they say. But uh, I thought he looked really good today, and like I at least see the vision now. He's six two, about two hundred. Like he he looks a little bit bigger. Looks like he's grown into his body a little bit. Uh, he had a few nice plays, and like I'm I'm pretty encouraged by just most of the things I'm seeing with this offense. They're like way ahead of schedule, it yeah, seems. And really, same. we might find out, which we did last year. We might find out that their opposition just sucks because last yep. year we thought yeah. the defensive line was awesome in practice and. Turns out the O line was just bad, but we'll see. And look, man, I really am like I, I hate to say it, like I'm I'm excited to get back out there today to kind of just yeah. see how this thing develops, and we're gonna be covering it. I'm I'm looking yeah. forward to it, man. Yeah, we're gonna have another one tomorrow and talking more about it. So appreciate everybody watching in, listening in, and be sure to subscribe to all the great content we have on United States Sports. But <laughs> part of that nature is gonna be cooking, as the kids say, uh, during this spring football season. So look forward to giving you all the great coverage right here on United States. I have Sports. one more thing to say, John. Every single person listening to this right now, stay tuned. Me and Curtis are about to go live for a six pack in the next hour or so. Yep. Yeah. So hop on. You better. I better see full mandatory attendance. At I've, that I've already seen somebody asking about the Jake yeah, Paul, the Jake Mike Paul Tyson fight. fight. You want to hear about, about it? Jake we're going to talk Paul, about Mike, it. Mike Tyson. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, you're, if you're a combat sports fan, tune into which, this one especially. Which, by the way, is, plug. is now live. Nice day or uh, nice day sports six pack is a live yes, show. Sir, which, these days, yes. So, so very soon, if you're having fun commenting and yelling at us. You can yell at us in a few minutes. We're about to go live. <laughs> it's very interactive. So I appreciate everybody, and uh, stay tuned for the United States Six Pack. We'll see you then.